going to see with my six-year-old son, who I will continue to exploit relentlessly <laughs> the next year. Honestly, when I uh, got this invitation, I, I uh, accepted with great reluctance because I knew it would make me confront two very sad facts about my life. One is that I'm way older than 35. <laughs> and the second is that even when I was under 35, I was never qualified enough to get this award. And then I picked Isabella Hamad, and she's like 27 when she published this. So I was really depressed after I found <laughs> that out. Uh, and then she wrote it, this novel, over five years, which meant that she started it when she was 22, which was even worse for me. Because I couldn't even write a short story when I was 27, much less 22. And The Parisian is actually a 550-page realistic novel. Uh, about Palestinian life between the world wars. It's incredible. It's an exquisite rendition of this time period and of this life focused on a young man named Midhat Kamal who leaves his hometown of Nablus in Palestine to go to Pont Montpellier in France and then to Paris to study medicine and then back to Nablus in Palestine in the 1920s and 1930s where he is going to be enmeshed in the political turmoil that's engulfing Palestine and the rest of the Middle East in this time. And along the way, Isabel, Isabel Hamad paints, wonderfully recreates with many fine-grained details and textures uh, French and Parisian Palestinian life. And with, Matt, with, with Minat Kamal, she gives us a portrait of a man between worlds and a biography of someone who matures from his teens into his middle age as he's confronted with, own, with his own illusions and limitations in the middle of this tumultuous era for Palestine and for Palestinians. The novel is set before the displacement of Palestinians in 1948, but the novel centers not on the exile and occupation to come, but on the dignity, complexity, and subjectivity of Palestinian life, which is all rich material for a novel that unabashedly gestures to the 19th century in a highly accomplished, epical rendition of one man's life. I'm much closer in age to Midhat Kamal than Isabel Hamad, and from my middle-aged vantage point, I can say that it showed, the novel shows great empathy for the middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking out at you, and most of you are under 40, so all I can say is just wait. You're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. And the novel captures this middle age, uh, middle age's sentiments with acuity and wisdom. I'm also going to say that it's a novel that's historical, being set in the earlier part of the 20th century, but is resolutely contemporary because obviously one of the reasons why Isabel Hamad could not join us today is that she was afraid to leave Palestine because she was afraid she wouldn't be able to get back in if she were to return. The Parisian uh, would be a very impressive novel by a writer of any age but especially so for, for someone in her 20s. Intimate and sweeping, personal and political, domestic and historical, the Parisian is ultimately also a deep pleasure to read. In deciding which, uh, what to read tonight uh, from Isabella's stunning novel, The Parisian, Bella sent me a message that reads, I quote, the heart is always a winner. So this scene is between the main character, Bidhat, and Janet, the woman who bemuses him when he was a medical student in France. As Palestinian cities disappear, Hamad, like the enduring breaths of a vanished love, writes Nablus until it's eternal, and in so doing, gives us a deeper glance at the way the heart moves. What is Nablus like? Nablus is a little village. It's a town. I mean a city. It's not large, but we call it a city. What I mean is, even when you leave Nablus, you take it with you. Do you know what I mean? I think so. I didn't, I don't mean to say I don't love Nablus. I do. Only everyone knows everyone else's life. It can be a little, he made an exaggerated clawing gesture at the throat until she smiled, albeit weakly. I'm sure that's why my father likes Cairo. Egypt? He nodded. And for you? You choose medicine? That was his choice, my father's. He founded, I mean, 
He is one of the founders of a new hospital in Nablus. He considers it was very respectable, you know? But I'm also very content from it. I love science. I always love science. So it is my choice too. I'm excited by, he looked down, thinking of the words, the work is so exact, so particular. But, he sighed, one has to be too detached, you know? To his surprise, Jeanette erupted with laughter. He looked up to see her face glowing, her whole body rippling with amusement. When after several moments she was still laughing, he tentatively joined in, watched her carefully to know when to stop. An abrupt little cough was the signal. And as she sighed back into silence, he stopped his smile. It occurred to him that she could not possibly have known he was thinking of dissection, of the legless man he saw that morning in the chair, neither of which seemed to him very funny. He looked at her still smiling eyes and tried to imagine what she thought about him. Thank you.